good morning students welcome to online lecture series in distributed computing system i am professor anu wagmare today's lecture we will start with our second unit communication and coordination so we'll cover today there is introduction of interprocess communication then characteristics of interprocess communication and uh, socket and communication primitives so interprocess communication so what is the process so process is a program in execution or you can say the the single most important difference between a distributed system and the uniprocess system is the interprocess communication so interprocess communication can be uh, defined as the communication among several processes involved within a distributed system scenario the application uh, programming interface provides a platform for programming the interface communication at the higher level abstraction this application programming interface is basically offered by the distributed computing system so distributed computing necessitates information to the exchange between <clears throat> group of independent processes when we say that Uh, the two or more computer systems from distributed scenario communicates with each other it means that two or more self governing process executing on individual computer systems are interacting with each other so this interprocess communication is said to be a unicast when there exists a direct communication from one process to other process and other hand the when the communication from one process to the group of processes the inter process communication is said to be a multicast so in any processor system inter process communication assumes the existence of shared memory the typical example is producer consumer problem one process writes to buffer reads from the another process the most basic form of the synchronization is schema form requires one word to be shared in a distributed system there is no shared memory so the entire nature of interprocess communication must be completely rewrote from the scratch all communication in distributed system is based is based on the message bus so what are the example for this uh, this is procedure a wants to communicates with procedure b it first builds a message in its own address space it executes a system call the os fetches the message and send it through the network to b then a and b have to agree of the meaning of its bits being sent then we will see the characteristic of this inter interpose interprocess communication so these are the five characteristics that is synchronous asynchronous communication message destination reliability ordering persistent and transient communication so in message passing operation namely send and receive are dedicated for the message passing among the group of process in message passing mechanism the message is simply nothing but the sequence of bytes in order to accomplish interprocess communication by the means of message passing an individual process transmit a message to a particular process that act as a destination another process situated at the destination receive a message transfer from the process site at the source so the interprocess communication encompasses compasses the information communication among the sending and receiving process in a distributed system scenario so we we'll see this different characteristics of this interprocess communication one by one so synchronous and asynchronous communication so synchronization means what synchronization means of a blocking that is we can say uh, interprocess communication operation may possibly offer the necessary synchronization is by means of a blocking so 
this is blocking means what? The blocking operation supplied by the individual process will block supplementary will block some supplementary processing of the process up until the operation is fulfilled. On the other hand, the inter-process communication operation might be asynchronous or you can say that is a non-blocking. So this asynchronous operation carried out by the process will not further processing of the process. As a substitute, the process is free to continue with the processing and, and optionally be informed by the system when the operation is satisfied. In synchronous communication, the send, sender is entirely locked. Right? In anticipation of its uh, request, is sanctioned to be accepted. In asynchronous um, communication, the sender continuously, immediately after it has submitted its message for the further transmission. Right? Submitted its message for the further transmission in case of a asynchronous communication. The next is message destination. So in some application, it is very uh, beneficial to be able to deliver same message to the member of a set of processes. Uh, some inter-process communication system offer the facility to send message to the group of destination, either course or the process. The next characteristic is the reliability. So reliability or unreliable or reliable. What is it by this reliable and unreliable? So in point-to-point um, -point message scheme can be termed as unreliable if message are not guaranteed to be delivered regardless of the single packet lost. Whereas the point-to-point -point message service can be called as the reliable if message guaranteed to be delivered in spite of a small amount of packet being lost. The ordering. So order, it is necessary for some application that masses to be transported in sender order. That is order in which the message we are delivered by the sender. So next is persistent and transient communication. So what do you mean by this persistent communication? The communication in which the message has been submitted for the transmission warehouse by the communication middleware as long as this text to forward the particular message to the receiver is known as the persistent communication. For example, that is electronic mail system is a classic example of this uh, communication. That is a persistent communication. Second, what is this transient communication? So when message is warehoused by the communication system, only as long as the sending application and receiving applications are executing are known as the transient communication. So next point is the socket primitives and the communication primitives. So socket, what do you mean by socket? The socket is a communication endpoint from which arriving data can be read and to which the application can write data that are to be directed out over the underlying network. Socket produ produces the generalization over the actual communication endpoint and that is used by the local operating system for the definite transport protocol. So there are some socket primitives are there for your transmission control protocol that is TCP. There is socket, bind, listen, accept, connect, send, receive and close. So socket, when calling the socket primitive, the caller creates the new connection endpoint for the specific transport protocol. So let's say socket means is create a new communication endpoint, meaning is new communication endpoint. So binding the communication point means that the local operating system reserve resources to accommodate sending and receiving message for the specific protocol. So this bind primitives associate the local address 
with the newly created socket so in short bind is nothing but the attach a local address to the socket it is a or we can say binding tells the operating system that server wishes to take a delivery of message only on the specific address and the port next listen this listen primitive is called only in case of a connection oriented communication or we can say in short there is announce the willingness in order to accept the connection it is a non blocking call that permits local operating system to reserve or we can say or sufficient buffers for the specific maximum number of connection that the caller is eager to receive the next accept accept we can say the block caller until a connection request arrives at the client side a socket first produced using the socket primitives but clearly binding the socket to local address is not essential since the operating system can directly allocate the port when the connection is set up so caller state the transport level address in which connection request is to be sent is basic requirement of the connect primitive or you can say connect is actively attempt to establish a connect uh, connection the client is blocked until connection has been set up effectively after which both sides can start the exchanging information to the send and receive primitive that is send is something send some data over the connection and receive is nothing but the receive some data over the connection and final that is a close the closing the connection is symmetric when using the socket and is recognized by having the both server and client call the close primitives so these are some socket and the communication primitives so next lecture we will see what are the marshalling and external data representation also we will see um, what are the network overlay networks right what are the different types of overlay network what are the advantages of that overlay network